Contradictions and pain and despair. This broadcast today is for you. Just take one moment to please subscribe to this channel and like the video. And I want you to watch the whole video here. And then comment down below to let me know how this moment spoke to your heart and what Holy Spirit was showing you. It's an honor to have you here. I don't take your attention for granted. You can be watching any video, so thank you for being here on this moment of grace. And this is what I hear heaven singing over you. Cause I'm calling the prisoners to set the captives free. Yes, I'm calling the prisoners to set the captives free. And I'm thinking of Paul and Silas in Acts chapter 16, here in the Passion Bible, says one day in verse 16, one day as we were going to the house of prayer, we encountered a young slave girl who had an evil spirit of divination, the spirit of Python. She had earned great profits for her owners by being a fortune teller. <laughs> she kept following us, shouting, these men are servants of the great Hi, God, and they're telling us how to be saved. Discernment is so important. Not every voice that shouts out praises to God is necessarily of the Lord. You do not know something by information and hearing with the ears alone. You know it by the great and mighty Holy Ghost within your spirit, confirming and testifying that this same spirit is of the spirit of Jesus Christ. 1 John says that any spirit that does not testify that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is anti-Christ. There are anti-Christ influences and thoughts out there. You don't have to believe every spirit. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the tearing down of strongholds and vain imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God bringing every thought into captivity to the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. When her owners realized that their potential on making profit had vanished, they forcefully seized Paul and Silas and dragged them off to the city square to face the authorities. When they appeared before the Roman soldiers and magistrates, the slave owners leveled accusations against them, saying, These Jews are troublemakers. I wonder how many times you've followed the will of God in your life and you've been labeled a troublemaker because Jesus causes a massive amount of trouble to the religious structure. <laughs> Why is that? Because he's calling prisoners to set the captives free. Come on. They're throwing our city into confusion. They're pushing their Jewish religion down our throats. It's wrong and unlawful for them to promote these Jewish ways, for we are Romans living in a Roman colony. A great crowd gathered, and all the people joined in to come against them. The Roman officials ordered that Paul and Silas be stripped of their garments and beaten with rods on their bare backs. Verse 23. After they were severely beaten. Have you been severely beaten? know what it's like to face persecution, to be called a troublemaker for Jesus' sake? You're in good company, my friend. They were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them securely. So the jailer placed them in the innermost cell of the prison and had their feet bound and chained. Paul and Silas, undaunted, 
prayed in the middle of the night and sang songs of praise to God. Hallelujah. While all the other prisoners listened to their worship. So I'm calling the prisoners to set the captives free. So I'm calling the prisoners to set the captives free. Just because you're in prison doesn't mean that you're not free. Because some of my people are in prisons that the natural says the Lord, watch how I lead you, oh, into men's prison cells, oh, they do the best they can to change the word of God, but they don't know that it'll be their end. He uses the foolish things to confound the wise. This is a God that's attracted to prison cells because he's in love the jailer and his family and he's looking for Paul and Silas's for Paul and Timothy's he's looking for his sons and daughters who he can call in a contradiction prison cells and not take the process personally I'm calling the prisoners to set the captives free. Suddenly, it says, a great earthquake shook the foundations of the prison, and all at once, every prison door flung open, and the chains of the prisoners came loose, every single chain. Startled, the jailer awoke and saw every cell door standing open. I'm calling prisoners to set the captives free. Do you know that your midnight praise out of your prison cell awakens the captors? Oh, Assuming that all the prisoners had escaped, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself. Did you know that the real chains, the real prison cells, are the ones who hold the keys? And he's looking for Paul and Timothy's. Oh, to not take it personally, to go into captivity. Because the Lord says, you don't know what I'm up to. I just want you to trust me in the middle of the cell. Oh, my grace in this moment wants to set every captive free from their hell. Oh, it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Yes, because I will lead the prisoners to set the captives free. He was about to kill himself when Paul shouted, in the darkness stop don't hurt yourself we're all still here i wonder if you need to hear today i wonder if you need to hear somebody shout out in the middle of your darkness stop don't harm yourself don't kill yourself it's okay everything's gonna be fine we're all still here oh let this voice says the lord be the one that you need telling you that you're bound for I'm calling the prisoners to set the captives free. Hey, right here in this prison cell, what prison cell are you in today that you need to be saved from captivity? Well, I've come as a voice today to tell you from the Lord that this is not the end. Wait, I know the shaking earthquake and the breaking of the prison cells has woken you up oh and even though you're about to pull the trigger even though you're about to kill yourself in the darkness then you hear a voice then you hear a voice that says stop don't hurt yourself we're all still here we're all accepted in papa's love right now 
need to hear grace Say stop Don't hurt yourself Oh I just want to prophesy to you today In this moment of grace That the days are over Of you hurting yourself Thinking that that's, it's a solution Oh hurting yourself Is not a solution The Lord says I sent my word Into your prison cell And I let you have the key I knew that my grace comes suddenly and liberates you from your past. Oh, shame. And don't think that the powers of this world have any sway over what I say. Oh, no. For grace is ruling over the principalities and powers and every throne and name that is named. In this age, oh, it's grace, it's sovereign grace, sovereign grace today for you. Stop. Don't hurt yourself. We're all still here. <clears throat> and the jailer called for a light. See, once you hear the sound of grace telling you to stop in the darkness, the next words out of your mouth can be, let there be light. When he saw that they were still in their cells, he rushed in and fell trembling at their feet. What is this power that yields to me? How does the prisoner set the captives free? Because oh, there's a song of grace in the prison cell. Just like Paul and Silas, Writing on parchment scrolls from that Roman prison cell. Oh, for the Lord says, does not the weakness of a little parchment paper and ink with words from my heart have the power to absolutely shake the foundations of this world? Oh, just the power of that midnight praise does away. This world and puts it to shame. Jesus at the cross of Calvary rendered sin, death, hell, the grave, and every principality and power absolutely powerless. He stripped them naked, proved the sham of their false authority at the cross of Calvary, and led them as his prisoners in his triumphant processional up to his father's throne. And that's where we sit right now. Come on, lift your hands, oh prisoner. You're sitting the captive free. You're sitting the captive free with your midnight praise in Jesus' name. Wow. Yeah. Then he led Paul and Silas outside and asked, what must I do to be saved? You see, there's something beautiful in the process of Holy Spirit's liberation. It's all about mutual submission and trust, my friends. Paul and Silas praised out of the prison cell, and their very song shook the foundations of the prison cell, and the bars and the chains and everyone's shackles fell crumbling to the ground, and yet they stayed put. I hear the Lord saying, oh, my prisoner, if you'll just stay put, oh, I'm bringing in the jailer with the keys to set you free. Why would you submit to such a foolish process? It's because Papa's heart says, I love that jailer. Oh, if you knew my destiny for you and you knew what my plan was up to, you'd know that I'm looking for a jailer and his family to set free. If you just trust me, says the Lord. If you just trust me one more time, says the Lord. One more time, one more time, says the Lord. Just trust me. I've got a recipe out of captivity that doesn't just set free the prisoners. It redeems and restores the jailer's family. See, Papa's heart is all about setting the prisoner and the captor free. I'm calling the prisoners to set the captives free. Because 
Cause the victim and victimizer Are all part of my family Says the Lord He leads Paul and Silas out of the cell And asked what must I do to be saved Oh the power of a question Asked in relationship where once Paul and Silas submitted to the jailer, to their chains, now by the witness of God and the supernatural power of praise released out of a prison cell, the jailer crumbles and trembles at his knees and submits himself to his prisoners and says, What must I do to be saved? Ha <laughs> ha! Because this is the only way that it works, beloved friends. God does not force people into submission. It's only the power of my grace, says the Lord. Oh, come on, lift your hands right now and get ready for my love. Oh, I'll lead you beside still waters. But oh, once you've tasted of my marvelous grace, oh, I'll make you to lie down in green pastures. I have my way, I have my way like Paul on the road to Damascus. Hey, Shaka Rebel, Spranda Marobo, like Paul on the road. trace of independence left and all you can say is what must I do to be saved wow and they answered believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved you and all your family it's a family affair as my mother-in-law says it's a family of bears yes the Lord's rescuing families in this hour Come on, prophets of the Lord, I hear the Lord saying, get ready, lift up your hands from the midst of your contradiction prison cell. Oh, and out of that well in your belly, says the Lord, I'm bringing forth a midnight praise to shake the captives free, to release the prison cells, to break the shackles with your prison praise. Oh, oh there's supernatural miracles, there's an earthquake, there's an earthquake of my glory. Then they prophesied the word of the Lord over him and his family. This is the word of the Lord over you and your family today. Hallelujah. Even though the hour was late, he washed their wounds. I hear the Lord say, bringing you to your captor so they can wash your wounds they created. If you allow me, do the work by my spirit. Not only will I restore and reconcile, oh, but the ones who caused your wounds, by my grace will wash them and will heal them soon. Says the Lord, because I'm calling prisoners to set the captives free. Hey! Those of you watching, the Lord says, even they that cause your wounds, as you sing to me out of your pain, of your prison, I will cause even those very same ones to wash your wounds as you speak the word of the Lord over them. Yes, reconciliation and restoration is the word of the hour, says the Lord. Watch, and I will do it in a night. I will do it in just one night, says the Lord. So I'm calling the prisoners to set the captives free. Even though the hour was late, he washed their wounds. Then he and his family were baptized. Ho ho! I hear the Lord saying, <laughs> Oh, as you allow your victimizers to wash your wounds, they will be baptized grace as you submit to my ways says the Lord of my grace you make that praise you cause them to wash your wounds very soon says the Lord just watch with your eyes and in my love they will be baptized cause I'm calling 
prisoners to set captives free. He took Paul and Silas into his home and set them at his table and fed them. The jailer and all his family were filled with joy in their newfound faith in God. Do you know that God's looking for a people in this hour who will submit to the process of being put into a prison cell and not take it personally because Papa has his gaze set on a jailer and his family. Is that you? That's you today. Just lift your hands to the Lord around the world right now on YouTube and just give him praise. Out of the midst of your prison cell, the Lord says, Oh, I'm establishing my sovereign grace. And I'm setting the captive free thanks to the prisoner's praise. In Jesus, my name, if you've enjoyed this moment of grace, please, would you subscribe right now to help us reach our goal of 1,000 subscribers? Like this video, smash the like button, thank you. And comment down below what the Holy Spirit's speaking to you. And be sure to check the description down below for great resources to encourage your journey in grace. It's been an honor to have you here for this prophetic moment of grace. And stay tuned because the next moment of grace is coming up and it is anointed and ordained just for you. Thank you for joining me on this moment of grace. Thoughts from his heart to impart grace for your moments. Because all it takes is a moment to experience grace.